Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mono Black Artifacts. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope everybody is doing exceptionally well. I hope your week is starting off well. We're kicking things off with kind of a, a crazy one here. This is Mono Black Artifacts. I will go ahead and say, while I did make just a very small, minute change to the deck, the base of the list, and truthfully, like 99% of the list, is based on Swayze's list, uh, which he did post over on Aetherhub. I will link him down below because, again, uh, he created the majority of this. I, I don't want to take any credit for that, but uh, I did make one small change. He initially had two Lithoform engines in the deck, which I'll talk about why, uh, but I actually swapped those out for Blood Juice Thirst. Uh, and again, I'll talk about why that is as well. But uh, essentially what this deck is looking to do uh, is garnish a lot of extra kind of life gain, card draw, all kinds of important stuff based on the fact that we're playing a lot of colorless things. Uh, so in the early turns of the game, what that means for us is we can hopefully drop something like a Patchwork Automaton. This is going to hopefully garnish a lot more 1-1 counters and be a little bit trickier to deal with for point and shoot removal uh, on the opponent's end. So as we're going through the game and as we're casting a lot more artifacts, this is going to get a lot bigger. This is, you know, just a long-term threat for the game. Reckoner Bankbuster obviously throws a counter on the, the automaton, but it also allows us to draw extra cards. Uh, it does provide us with a creature as well, so obviously, you know, if we crew it for three, we can get in there for some damage, which is great. Uh, we've got a nice little circuit mender here. Uh, full four of these. Three mana for a 2-3. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life. Phenomenal. When it leaves the battlefield, you draw a card, so it replaces itself a lot of the time. Uh, and it's not just when it dies, it's when it leaves the battlefield. So uh, no matter how it leaves the battlefield, you'll be drawing a card, which is great. Uh, uh, the four drop slot is really where things get kind of spicy. So first and foremost, we do have the Cosmos Elixir as a three of here. Uh, this is going to, again, just provide us with some long-term either life gain or card draw, depending on the scenario. Uh, it does buffer our life total, which is very important for this deck because the early turns of the game aren't necessarily explosive. Uh, and so we really do need to garnish some of that life back if we can. Uh, I've found that in the best of one meta, sometimes this can be a little too slow. Uh, but that being said, in the grindier games, this really does work. So I think there are definitely some, some times where it makes more sense than others. But we also have Myriad Construct, uh, and this is an interesting one. So for four mana, you get a four four, essentially. Uh, you can kicker it for three, uh, and so in total you'd be paying seven, but when it enters the battlefield, it gets a one one counter on it for each non-basic land your opponents control. What's nice about this is because we are in the Streets of New Capenna standard environment, a lot of the decks are at minimum two color, uh, if not three. Uh, and so we're finding ourselves uh, up against a lot of non-basic lands, even if they are just dual lands, pathways, you know, whatever it might be. This will usually come into play with at least one or two extra 1-1 one -one counters on it. And then, if it becomes the target of a spell or ability, you do sacrifice it and then create that number of 1-1 one -one colorless artifact creature tokens uh, equal to its power. Which is huge, because essentially what we can do is just flood the board and then ideally uh, devalue a lot of the removal on the opponent's side of the field. Now, what we also have is Malakir Rebirth. I know I'm kind of jumping back here, but the idea being that we can target this, uh, our, excuse me, target our own Myriad Construct with this and then essentially force the, uh, the tokens as we go through. Uh, this also does just provide us with lands, which is nice. Um, now, to help us out in this 5-drop slot, you'll see a lot of interesting things. Forsaken Monument is potentially the most important card for the deck. Giving all of your colorless creatures plus 2 plus 2 is massive, especially when you consider how many 1-1s one -ones we might get off of the construct. But additionally, whenever you tap a permanent for 1 generic mana, you actually add an additional generic mana. And you'll notice in the land slot, we've got Roadside Reliquary, Field of Ruin, and Crawling Barons all tapping to generate a generic mana. This doubles all that, uh, which is huge. And then whenever you cast a colorless spell, of course, you gain two life. So again, buffering that life total as we go through. 
Uh, Wandering Archaic, kind of an interesting one. You can play this on three for Explore the Vast Lands just to give yourself that extra land drop. We really don't have too many instants and sorceries, but uh, on the off chance we hit like a Blood Chief's Thirst or something like that, it wouldn't be bad. Uh, but the idea being that this also gains you three life. More importantly, though, on the Wandering Archaic side, you start to copy instants and sorceries that your opponents cast. So if they kill one of your creatures, which this will probably eat a removal spell pretty quickly, you probably are going to get to get... Uh, 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 kill one of theirs as well so it's kind of a nice little um, card for this deck it's an interesting one one that we really don't see in standard as often uh, but I really like it um, we do have Turgrid and Invoke Despair as well. A lot of times Turgrid will come out on the Lantern side just as an alternate win condition. It's an artifact. We want to tap it, get some stuff out of the opponent's hand, or just force the life loss. So very interesting stuff here. Oh, we can also untap this a lot, excuse me, because we double our mana. Um, yeah, just a lot of interesting stuff in this list. It really caught my eye. Swayze, thank you so much for sharing this one, my friend. Uh, Swayze, I know you're, you watch occasionally, so I really do appreciate you being uh, such a strong supporter of the channel got to get you in that guest slot man uh but let's uh let's jump in let's see how this one goes this is gonna be an interesting one we might lose a lot because i've got a lot of learning to do with this deck but it's gonna be a fun one so let's see what we can do all right guys and here we are for game number one this is actually a great hand uh so we will go ahead and keep this um kind of curious to see how this ends up going but i do really like this hand we have to make a decision on the rebirth uh and truthfully right now is kind of the time to make it we do have invoke despair that we're going to want to cast i think we go ahead and throw this out there uh the reason this makes sense now uh is because it's turn one we've got nothing to play uh and i'd like to be able to cast uh the patchwork automaton on turn two and then have a turn three play which in this case is now explore the vast lands so this actually is quite nice okay uh we can just kill that uh the question is do we need to um they can just blitz it but they're pretty far away from that i think i am going to be a bit aggressive here uh we've got the fourth land as well which is really helpful because even if they deal with the automaton we can get the construct down and now all of a sudden we've got a lot more going on one more land and we've actually got wandering archaic as well uh which is quite good there is kaito uh would love to get invoke despair mana not this turn obviously because it really doesn't help us that much but in general that would be helpful uh, let's go ahead and cast the Myriad Construct. This is going to throw a 1-1 uh, a counter on the Automaton, so we can get in for the attack as well. Um, and now, we're basically just hoping they can't deal with too much on our side. If we can get these things uh, just attacking in a lot more, we should be okay. It does look like Esper Control is obviously the, the deck from the opponent, um, which is a little scary. I twitch. Okay. Um, interesting. So, there's the Crawling Barons. Uh, that's interesting. Um, all right. So, how do we want to do this? We can kill Kaito regardless of what happens. Um, we can also just attack in with the Crawling Barons. Uh, I think I'm... I think I'm kind of in for this. This may be incorrect. I really don't know, but we're going to try um, my thing is both of these can attack the Kaito to kill and then this can come in here now They do have one mana available, so they could just have like a fading hope, uh, which would be really frustrating, but it's not the end of the world um, Okay, March of Otherworldly Light that certainly hits uh, in a bad bad way because it is a land drop, but uh, We'll see what happens here I'm kind of glad we got that out of there, though, um, just because we had a lot of other options that they could have uh, of, uh, hit here, which would have been quite bad. Um, Kaito is really doing some work, though, against us. Being able to draw so many cards is obviously very important. I'm assuming this is a Doomscar, by the way. Yeah. Uh, which does get around the Myriad Construct, which is obviously not great for us. Um, I think we just go ahead and play the Lantern and start uh, hitting them with this. At the very least, this is going to, you know, make them have to consider either three life or discarding cards, which is really not bad for us. They do get rid of a Rafine, so I'm assuming they've got probably another one. Um, would love to get Invoke Despair mana. 
We were definitely a bit reckless, I think, uh, with some of our plays here, but let's go ahead and do this. Um, just kind of force the issue once again. And I think we just play the Myriad Construct. Um, I'm trying to think. We could obviously Meat Hook Massacre just to get rid of the 1-1, but I feel like that's just not very good. Um, we can't block these, so kind of sucks. They might just be... Um, they attacked with both, which is interesting. They've either got another creature, yeah, okay, or I was going to say a sweeper. Um, and either way, it's not great, but it's fine. There's the Legion Angel. Uh, land is good. Land is very good, actually. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's super, super helpful. Okay. Um, let's do this first. There's no reason not to. Let's go ahead and force that issue. Let's see what they discard. Uh, we do have the Meat Hook Massacre, which is going to deal with quite a bit here. Um, I really wish we could. Yeah, we can't, unfortunately. Um, let's do this. Let's go ahead and Meat Hook for a three. That's going to get rid of their board does put the construct down to a one so we're not going to be able to deal with one of the planeswalkers here but it does clear their board which is quite nice and it gains us a little bit of life here uh i think it's kaito that we want to attack not 100 percent positive on that um and this might just eat a removal spell too nice well done uh hitting a land off the top is very good for them, obviously. <laughs> Not for us. Another eye twitch, huh? Um, we are short on black mana here, which is obviously not ideal. An automaton. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, let's go ahead and do this. Again, I don't see a reason not to do this now. They're going to take the three. Huh. Okay. What do we want to do? I'm just going to play the Wandering Archaic, I think. Uh, and I will actually attack the Sorin. They can block here, that's fine. Uh, the reason I'm okay with that is because the reality is the Flyer is more important to them than we are 4 4 on the ground is. They obviously have a lot of sweeper removal, not necessarily a ton of uh, point and click removal, if that makes sense. And so. Makes more sense for us to be aggressive and then make them respond, I think. Um, and hey, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Again, like I said, this is a deck where I have had a a good bit of practice because I knew it was going to be challenging. Uh, I didn't realize how challenging. It's a very tricky deck to play. Uh, which is fine. It's just uh, a, lot of, a lot of learning, we'll say. Um, let's go ahead and untap. Let's go ahead and do this again. Um, I highly doubt they're gonna just take three here. I expect they'll discard. Yeah, okay. Uh, so if we attack, what can happen? Not a ton. Well, I mean, they could have probably quite a bit, but we're just gonna go for it here. And they let Kaito go down. They do have Confront the Pass, so that probably makes sense. Uh, it might have been better just to have attacked them. Yep, they're going to gain quite a bit of life back, I assume, uh, with a vampire here. Uh, I kind of wish we had played Turgrid on the other side, not really thinking about the uh, connive triggers here. We would have been able to steal quite a bit, um, but it's all good. They gain nine. Very good. And now they can probably freely draw whatever's on the top of their deck. In this case, it's just a uh, tenacious underdog. So there's the Legion Angel. Sure. There's the Kaito. Very nice. Uh, yeah. All right. Not a lot we can do about that. Um, let's go ahead and do this. The trick is, again, they have so many flyers that it's going to be pretty difficult for us to really deal with anything here. Um, so what can we do? Not a lot. Again, I feel like the only thing we can do is go for the uh, the discard plays here. We're going to be taking quite a bit of damage. Um, there's not a lot we can do about it. Do we attack in? 
Um, honestly, I think we do. The, the reason being here, again, this gets something off of the field um, that is going to be dealing a lot more damage to us. And so while no, this isn't great, it's about the only option we have. So I am going to go ahead and take it. Um, they connive twice. Terrible. We're all going to die. Uh, we've been a little short on black mana this game, and Invoke Despair would, while not a game-winning card by any means, would have certainly helped uh, along the way here. We do have the Crawling Barons as well, and the, the Roadside Reliquary, but I think at this point we're, we're pretty well lost, um, which is fine. Uh, they just, this Esper deck is just so good. Rafine is ridiculous. Um, yep. They could just throw the Meat Hook out there, yeah, just for two. Um, and I think that it doesn't win them the game because we have our own meat hook, but excuse me, it does kind of even things out so we can't just win with a meat hook. And yeah, that. What? 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 How? Um. Okay, we won! <laughs> what happened? What was that? They had the game. I was about to concede. Like, literally, I was about to good game them because I... All right, game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game two. I have no clue what happened in that first game, but I will happily take it. Um, <laughs> this isn't necessarily a great hand, but we do have a little circuit mender here, and I'm kind of cool with uh, running that. We do have the Forsaken Monument, which again is such a crucial card for this deck. So kind of just hoping we draw a couple more lands so we can get that going. Um, if we do, we're in pretty relatively good shape. Um, the Circuit Mender is quite nice here because, again, it will draw us a card if they kill it for whatever reason. They also are a World Tree deck, which means the Myriad Construct kicked could be pretty useful. <laughs> uh, this might be an interesting one. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have basically no basic lands, so I'll take that. Um, sick. That's not bad at all, actually. Um, I think we just play the, the Elixir here. Um, this is going to allow us to draw a card, which is great. Um, and now, you know, obviously this basically gets a free attack in here. But uh, the idea being that if we can get some of these engine pieces going, like if we draw another untapped land, we can Forsaken Monument. Uh, we do have Wandering Archaics, so we could go that route. But I think we're in the, gam the, the game plan of Forsaken Monument into the Construct, which I think is just going to be better. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, uh, I will happily attack in here. Um, definitely didn't think they would block. There was really no reason for them to. The nice thing about the elixir is it does kind of stave off the, the damage that we're taking from the vampire. They are obviously gonna be a token deck, which is not good. Um, and they're gonna draw some cards here, which is also not good, but we'll see what we can do. Um, another monument, so. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, which is not really enough to do much more, so we'll just have to do this. And I think we'll just pass here. They obviously have a lot of power with the double striking uh, mechanic, and this is definitely gonna be something that they are not super stoked about. Uh, if they, I doubt this is a sweeper deck. Uh, in the Myriad Construct, while it doesn't solve our problem 100%, it does mean if they try and kill it, we get a ton of 1-1s, one in this case 11. Um, yep. Uh, which, because of the Forsaken Monument, are 3-3s. Three <laughs> uh, which is pretty good, as it turns out. Um, let's go Automaton first. Let's go... Oh! We're amazing. We're the best players in the world, obviously. We're, we're incredible. Uh, we do have time for a game three, guys. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, here we are for our last game. Definitely gonna have to be our last game. We don't have any black mana, but we do have a couple of really good two, two drops here that we can play. Uh, the Meat Hook Massacre is a little awkward um, just because we don't have black mana, but we do have the Field of Ruins. So worst case scenario, we might be able to kill one of their lands just to grab an extra. 
Um, oh. What is with everybody giving up today? <laughs> All right, that was not our last game. One more. All right, for real, last game. <laughs> uh, do we keep this? Yeah, I think we do. We've got the circuit mender. If we get one more land, we've got the elixir and then of course monument and invoke. So our mid to late game is really, really good. Uh, we can play this for the land because again, we do need to get to four black mana. So that seems pretty important for us. Um, also, we're against urine. I, that might not be how that's pronounced, but <laughs> I like that. Um, I like that a lot. Uh, let's let's throw this out. This is gonna be a rough matchup for us, guys. Not gonna lie. Um, not a ton we're gonna be able to do about this. We just have to force our way through. We probably lose, um, but you know what? It's cool. We've had a weirdly good run so far, so not really sure what's going on there. <laughs> All right. Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst would not go amiss right now. Um, I think we'll just play the Field of Ruin. It really doesn't matter at this point. They're all untapped lands. Um, we do get the Circuit Mender down and we can block. I My biggest thing is if they have the Rune of Might uh, or the white one. <laughs> I never remember what it's called. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right, sick. Um, yeah, we're gonna have a hard time here. That's the one, the sustenance one. Way to be there. Um, another circuit mender. Okay, well, we're just gonna play one. Gain a couple life. Go us, we're amazing. Um, yeah, the Cosmos Elixir are probably gonna be a bit slow here, so I think we're gonna have to go for the constructs. Okay, cool, so now they can just play runes for free. <laughs> It's just so good, right? Just amazing. Um, yeah, we're we're not gonna last very long against this opponent, uh, which is totally fine. Makes sense, I get you. you did it. Please don't have another rune. If they do have another rune, they'll play it. That's kind of the good news. Um, okay, well, I said good news. I meant it's terrible for us, but it's good that we know they're just going to play the runes out. You know what I mean? Does that make sense to everybody? Probably not. Uh, we definitely just block something also. Oh my goodness. Can they just win this turn? Like, I think they can. <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah. Uh, we definitely just block. This has trample, so it doesn't matter if we block it. Let's let's draw something really good. That is not it. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna good game them. We're super dead. Uh, let's talk about this. All right, this has been like one of the weirdest videos I think I've ever recorded. So many people giving up before. I, I mean, especially that first one. They had won the game. <laughs> I don't know what that was, uh, but let's talk about the deck. Swayze, thank you so much again, my friend. I uh, really do appreciate your deck building style. I think this was a really fun experiment to try and create something that's very artifact based and what truthfully is not a super strong artifact uh, environment right now, or colorless environment, I should say. Uh, we do have some very powerful cards. It's just that the, the deck construction aspect uh, seemed to be a challenge when I was trying this uh, months ago, not months ago, a month ago. Uh, and I don't think Streets gave it a whole lot. So uh, in my opinion, the deck is really fun. Um, I think it's not very good on the ladder. Despite getting three wins here, uh, technically that, that third one was not really a win and the first one really wasn't a win. So um, I, I would suggest uh, that if you're gonna run a deck like this, expect that you're just trying to do something cool and not that it's gonna win a lot. Um, I think it's really fun. I think you could certainly go in some different directions with it. I really like the Myriad Construct direction because uh, it just gives it a little bit more of a push. What's kind of nice too is with the Wandering Archaic, if they try and kill uh, if you've got a Myriad Construct and a Wandering Archaic on the field, there's some corner cases where you, you know, they try and kill the Wandering Archaic, you point it over to the Myriad Construct, you get tons of 1-1s, and then you're basically left with a, uh, a very difficult field to deal with. So, um, 
lots of interesting stuff here and really awesome little mini combos in the deck. Um, but overall, I just don't think it's that good for the ladder. Still fun. Let me just be clear. Like, this is a ridiculously fun list. Uh, and Swayze, again, thank you so much, my man. I do appreciate it. Guys, I hope you have a great start to your week. I do appreciate everybody watching. Uh, I think this was a really sick deck. I, I wish it had, like... That last game was rough. Uh, I think that's what you would normally expect, but that's okay. Uh, still really fun, guys. Thank you so much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Do stay tuned. We'll have some more standard gameplay tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. We do appreciate it. See you again very soon.